In this example, we're given the parametric equations of a plane curve, as well as the graph of the plane curve, and asked to find the length of the loop of the given curve. So our goal here is to find the length of the loop with the length of this piece of the curve. To find this length, we'll have to use the arc length formula, but to use this formula, we'll have to find the interval of t that traces out this loop, because that'll provide us with the limits of integration. And there are a couple ways of doing this, but let's first take a look at this on the T84 graphing calculator. To save some time, I've already entered the equations as well as adjust the window. Now if we press graph and then trace, we might be able to determine the values of t that trace out this curve, which will give us our limits of integration. Notice right now t is equal to negative two. As we press the right arrow, t will increase. So notice that this y-intercept is somewhere between when t is negative 1.8 and negative 1.7 but we need the exact value of t. So this is not going to help us that much. But let's go ahead and trace out the curve. Notice when t is equal to zero, we're at the origin, and that should make sense because notice that looking at our equations, when t is zero, both the x and y coordinate are zero. So because of the symmetry, we could use t equals zero to help us find the length of the loop. If we find the length of half of the loop, and then multiply it by two. So our main goal here is to determine what value of t will give us our y-intercept. So now if we go back to our graph, notice how the y-intercept is the point zero nine. So we can determine the value of t that corresponds to this point by setting either x equal to zero and solving for t or setting y equal to nine and solving for t. Let's go ahead and use y equals three t squared to determine the value of t at this point here. So using y equals three t squared, we'll substitute nine for t, that would give us nine equals three t squared, and we'll divide both sides by three. That would give us t squared equals three, and now to solve for t, we'll take the square root of both sides of the equation, Remember, this is going to give us two values of t, so a plus or minus there. So we have t equals plus or minus square root three, which means to find the length of the loop, we could use the closed interval from a negative square root three to positive square root three. But because we notice that at this point here, or the origin, t was equal to zero, We could trace out half of the curve, or from here to here, using the interval from zero to positive square root three, and then multiply the arc length by two. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's use the interval from zero to positive square root three, which will make performing the substitution a little easier. So the length of the loop, or the arc length, is gonna be equal to two times the definite integral from zero to square root three, and then we're gonna have the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. So dx dt would be equal to three minus three t squared squared, and then plus dy dt squared. Well, dy dt would be six t squared. Let's go ahead and take this integral over to the next slide, perform the algebra under the square root, and then integrate. Let's first square the binomial three minus three t squared. So we'll have four products, we'll have nine, and then minus nine t squared, and then minus nine t squared again, and then plus nine t to the fourth. So now we have s equals two times the integral from zero to square root three of the square root of, this will be nine minus 18 t squared, 
plus 9t to the fourth, and then we'll have plus 36t squared from 6t to the second. Now let's combine our like terms here and here. Let's go ahead and put the highest degree term first. So we'll have 9t to the fourth. It's going to be plus 18t to the second. And then we'll have plus 9. Here we have a common factor of 9, so let's factor out the 9. It'll leave us with t to the fourth plus 2t to the second plus 1. This is a perfect square trinomial, so we can factor this again. Let's continue on the next slide. So we'll have 9, this will be two binomials. The factors of t to the fourth will be t to the second and t to the second. The factors of positive one that add to positive two are one and one. Notice how the radicand is a perfect square. So we'll have two times the integral, zero to square root three. The square root of nine is three. Here we have two equal factors. This will simplify to one of them, dt. Let's go ahead and factor out the three. So we'll have six times integral from zero to square root three of t to the second plus one dt, which will give us six, and then we'll have t to the third divided by three plus t, and limits of integration are from zero to square root three. So now we'll perform the substitution. We'll first substitute square root three, that would give us three square root three divided by three plus square root three, and then minus when t is zero, they're both zero. So this simplifies nicely. So we have just square root three plus square root three, that's two square root three, so we have six times two square root three. So the length of the loop would be 12 square root three units. Well, if we want a decimal approximation, that would be approximately 20 point seven, eight, four, six units. So going back to our graph just for a moment, we just found the length of this loop here of the plane curve. I hope you found this explanation helpful.